Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to draw Mary Poppins who is played by Emily Blunt in the new 2018 Mary Poppins movie due out in December. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing. Today I'm drawing on Strathmore Tone Tan Paper and I'm using my Prismacolor colour pencils but all the items I use will be listed in the description box below if you want to go and check them out. Before I started my Mary Poppins drawing, I used my Prismacolor colour chart to sketch out and help me choose which colours I was going to use. I tested these out on the Strathmore Tone Tan paper and noted down which colours I would need for which part of the drawing. It's really useful to do this, especially if you're using a different colour paper like I am today, since some colours will show up differently and it saves any colour catastrophes later on. So I noted down which colours I'd need for Mary Poppins hat, hair, skin, eyes and so on. With that done, the only thing left to do was to lighten up my pencil sketch using a kneaded eraser. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it around the lightest areas of the face so you don't get those pesky pencil outlines visible on your finished drawing. Right, let's jump on into this drawing. I have had to do this video as a time lapse because it took over four hours to complete, but you can slow it down in YouTube settings if you want to. So I began by working on the lightest areas of Mary Poppins' face and was careful to use a really light pressure on my pencil so I wouldn't damage the tooth of the paper. Prismacolor pencils are wax based and blend really nicely if applied in layers but you need to add those layers lightly with a sharp pencil and not press too hard too soon. If you press hard on your pencil this is called burnishing which flattens out the tooth or texture of your paper so any further layers of colour pencil will slide about and not give you the nice smooth blends that you're after. So as I move across Mary Poppins' face, I add a variety of different colours using my reference picture as a guide. It may look a bit patchy to begin with and the colour of the paper may still show through, but patience is the key with colour pencil drawings. Using the toned paper also helps because it acts as a mid-tone colour which you can use as a base to build colour onto. The main thing at this initial stage to focus on is getting the right colours down in light layers and remembering to keep your pencils sharp. If your pencil is sharp, it will be easier to cover the texture of the paper. Now, because colour pencil drawings can take a lot of time and patience, I sometimes move around the drawing to save from getting bored with just one area. So, after I'd added a few skin tones, I jumped into the eyes and mouth just to mix it up a bit. And because the eyes and lips are a lot darker in value than the skin tones, it can help you to gauge whether you need to go darker or lighter in the rest of your drawing, and this helps make your values more accurate over the picture as a whole. As a beginner to drawing and shading, it can be scary to go really dark, but it's the contrast in your work that will really make it pop out of the page. In fact, in my opinion, it's more important to have enough contrast than to have the right colours. So it doesn't matter if you don't have all the colours that I have or that you think you might need, as long as your values are right. And when we're talking about values, white is the lightest value whilst black is the darkest value. The difference between them is the contrast. If you want any more help with shading and values, I do have a couple of other videos on this channel that might help and I'll link them in the card above or you can find lots of amazing tutorials here on YouTube by other fantastic artists because I am by no means an expert, so feel free to go and check those out as well. So back to the drawing and now the face is starting to come together. At this stage I was happy with how the skin tone was developing and I'd started to put in some darker values under the brim of Mary Poppins' hat and had my lightest values in the areas of her face where light was hitting it. I was also quite happy with the eyes but I wasn't too happy with the lips at this stage and did make some minor alterations later on though I did do it off camera as I needed to concentrate and focus really closely to the drawing. Here though, you can see that once you've added multiple layers of colour pencil, you can go over with a white colour pencil which blends all those colours together really smoothly, covering the tooth of the paper and making a realistic skin tone. You can then add further colours on top as often using the white colour pencil to blend your layers can lighten up your values. At this point, despite knowing that Mary Poppins' mouth and chin area needed 
work, I had a break from skin and started on her collar and hair. Again with her hair, I started with the lightest highlighted areas and built up gradually to the darkest areas using a mixture of oranges, reds, purples and browns and used the white pencil to blend them all together. And as I mentioned earlier, I had to go in again with darker values after I blended in with the white. With hair, the best effects can be achieved by using the right length of pencil stroke, which will depend on hair length, as well as paying careful attention to the direction the hair is growing in. Look at the hair in terms of clumps or sections, so you don't get too bogged down by it, and avoid doing zigzag lines in all direction to get a more realistic and natural result. Also remember to add a few wispy hairs to help make it look realistic and blend into the face naturally without harsh lines. So with that done it was then time to start adding colour to Mary Poppins hat and I started with the blue band around her hat as I did before using lots of light layers and applying them with a sharp pencil. Blending them together with the white gave me a smooth even texture but again since it had lightened the colour I had to reapply more colour on top to get the value I was after. for the brim of the hat and this could have been really tricky because it must be made of something like straw. In the reference picture there was a pattern texture to the hat which might have taken ages if I had focused on that pattern from the start. But what I usually do when colouring detailed patterns, especially on clothing, is I leave the pattern until last. And I do have a video called How to Draw Clothing on my channel which I'll link above if you'd like to see my top tips for drawing clothes. But basically the way I do it, and it's not the only way or the right way, just the way I like to do it, is to block in the colour and the highlights and shadows and concentrate on any pattern or design right at the end. If you try to tackle the pattern early from the start, you can very easily get bogged down by intricate details and lose sight of the bigger picture. If you've not tried this before, why not give it a go and let me know in the comments box if you found it easier or not. I find it a lot quicker and now I actually enjoy drawing textures and patterns and don't dread them or leave them till the end as I used to do. For the decoration on the hat I had to be a bit creative as I couldn't really make out from my reference picture what was on her hat but I thought it looked a bit like a bird and a feather so that's what I drew. With that done it was just Mary Poppins dotty glove and coat to do and the glove did prove a bit tricky. So I started by roughly putting in the white dots with my white coloured pencil as I thought it would be harder to put them in over the dark blue of the glove at the end. Then using an indigo blue pencil went about going around these dots. I then added a layer of black coloured pencil to the darkest shadow area of the glove. So I concentrated mainly on the areas in between the fingers, but came to a problem when I added the white pencil to blend the layers, because it turned my indigo blue really light. So I had to go in with another blue on top, and then tried to add in some highlights to the folds in the glove, and that's where it all went a bit bleh. So at this point I brought out my zested pencil blend, which is a solvent for coloured pencils and I applied it using a cotton bud. It is important when using this to dab off any excess solvent on a paper towel or else it can bleed out and spread onto your drawing. This did seem to help smooth out my glove problem though and once it had dried I was able to then go in and add further layers of coloured pencil on top. I then went back in with the white pencil just to add in the dots where I'd lost some of that definition. So lastly it was time for Mary Poppins coat and this wasn't easy either, mainly because I didn't follow my own advice from earlier. I started off putting in a few of the shadow areas with a dark red pencil 
and then horror of all horrors I put the pattern in first but at least I get to show you what happens or what can happen at least if you do the pattern first so it started out okay it did take quite a while for me to get this all mapped out and the first layer went down fine the darker second layer went down okay as well but being that I had to apply several layers to cover the tooth of the paper I did feel like I was losing a lot of that detail because the colours were very similar and I could also see quite a lot of the colour of the paper showing through so I was a bit concerned that when I would blend these together as you can see here I lost a lot of that detail and I still had to add in the darker shadows to give the impression and um, shape and folds in the coat that I wanted to add in. So in my great wisdom or not I decided to go back with my pencil blender and blend this all out but in doing so lost a lot more of that detail and then had to painstakingly go in and put it back adding the shadows and that sort of thing afterwards. I could have saved myself a lot of time and effort if I'd have put the shading in first and then added the pattern at the end. It's not perfect or even practically perfect in every way but I was generally pretty happy with how it turned out and I can't wait to see the film. So if you've liked this video please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe and comment below which was your favourite part of the original Mary Poppins film. And last note, I have got another extra video coming out tomorrow, that's Saturday, with a mini art haul and what I've got in store for December on this channel, so be sure to check that out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!